Howdy, Coffee and Tools. Thought we'd do a little comparison thing here today. A uh, pile of things going on, but this is on sale at Lowe's right now for $59, but it's the newest, I guess, craftsman of the circular saws. It's the corded model. I like the corded models over the uh, battery ones. I haven't had much luck with the battery anything, really. Uh, this is not the oldest craftsman ever, but it's sort of like almost represents one of the final generations of when Sears and Craftsman were still kind of, you know, peaking with power tools. And this was their seven and a quarter inch circular saw. This circular saw here, of course, is, I guess we could almost call it the Stanley hardware, hard, or Stanley uh, tools, uh, almost like a generation one Craftsman. So let's compare and just yeah, have a look and see what's what's changed or what's bigger, better, and more wonderful. All right, here we go. So, granted, they're years apart, even in design, but first thing I noticed was this is an old issue. If you've ever been using a circular saw and you, you, you're cutting a board, and all of a sudden you'll get this. You'll get hooked into the uh, guard. And even though the guard is uh, following you know, should be following the lumber and going through like that. I don't know how many times I've been cutting something and gotten hooked like that into the lumber with the circular saw. So, apparently the new one, Craftsman gave this some thought. And I'll show you this. And you've got a piece here with the guard, which as you can see is going to roll right on past. So you're not going to get hung up. So they've added this little tongue here, right here so that you don't get that, because that was something that used to really uh, screw up a lot of work for me over the years with circular saws, getting into this hook area with certain, just certain cuts. It seemed like just, you know, sometimes, sometimes uh, everything worked just the way it was, it was fine, but that was always a big pain in the butt. Now, so that was, that was something. And the next thing I noticed was at the front here, they've got this nasty little uh, twist lock for your thumb and your finger and you try to get in there to unlock this so you could uh, set up a bevel. This one here has this great big latch so that was a that's a nice feature. Remember these saws uh, because of the time situation were probably priced about the same. This one was I think was more expensive because this was kind of a, they were looking at like a prosumer saw at the time. Uh, I don't remember the price but it was it was it was hellaciously high for you know, compared to this is, you know, compared to this. So the latch here was a lot better. And another thing that's really odd, but it's, it's interesting. I'm not sure if I'm happy with it or not. It's, this is going to be an awkward one, but this one here goes up to 45 degrees for bevel angle. That's it. She's topped out. This one will go to 55 degrees. So you can go over your 45. And if you're like me, that just allows for more error. But at the same time, it's nice to have, I think, that little bit of extra uh, beveling uh, angle because every once in a while you get some really weird cuts and sometimes that extra, you know, the 55 degree thing, that might help you out quite a bit. The other thing that I noticed with these two saws is back here, if we look at this motor, this motor is fully encased and there's no brushes on this thing. There is brushes, but I mean, there's no access to brushes. So you'd have to be a scientist to figure out how you're going to fix the brushes if, if and when they wear out on this guy. This one here, a nice new one, seems to have that right to repair situation going on. We have the brush holders right here. So if the brushes ever wear out, we can get these out. We can put new brushes in, go back and continue to use the saw. And the other thing I'm going to point out real quick too is look at the knob on this thing. I mean, it's a great big, huge, fatty knob. You almost can't get a hold of it because it's, it's sort of too big. This one here is, is just big enough that it's, you know, it's a nice handle. And of course, you also have the rafter hook, which, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that to me was a little overkill, but the rafter hook thing was like, okay, someday in the future, somebody will buy a house. They'll be up in the attic, they'll look up in the rafters, and they'll probably see one of these saws hanging on the rafters and wondering, you know, who left that there. But, yeah. Now, next thing, the lock. The button on the lock here is way down here. It's a small button, and you have to kind of get your thumb in there, rotate your blade, stop typing, it's not plugged in, and uh, until it locks. And it's kind of a, 
it's a hard one to use because you have to reach back in here. The new Craftsman's a lot nicer. They've got a great big button here. So you can push that in and there, I've locked the blade immediately so that I can, you know, unscrew this, change out the blade. Now I've got a, unfortunately, I've got an aftermarket blade on this one. So I can weigh these two, but I don't know if it's even worth putting it on the scale for you because this one here is approximately a pound and a half heavier. And uh, I would like to have a circular saw that's light, but the other thing too is the balance. It's This one is a little bit lighter, but it seems to have a nice balance. The old saw here, you can see right away when I pick it up, it doesn't have a balance. In fact, it's, it's heavy on this side, if anything. Doesn't bother me too much, I guess, but it's just the whole thing is, it's a heavier assembly. Motor-wise, technically, uh, Craftsman is saying that this is, the he this is a heavier motor. This is a 12 amp. This is a 15. Yeah, it sucks more current. Is it more powerful? Uh, it, it is. But it's also, it has more power, but it also has more RPM. This one here has essentially 500 RPM more. This was rated at 5,000. This one's rated at 5,500 RPM. So it's a little faster, stronger. And so that's, that makes for a good saw. Uh, the only thing I would criticize, I guess, this is an 18 tooth uh, blade, general purpose. And I, I guess that's okay. You can go buy yourself the blade that you like, you know. I uh, don't really care for this blade here, but it came with a saw at the time of purchase. It was something that, you know, was put on. I was like, okay, fine, I'll live with it. This one here came with a saw and I'll probably use it a little bit, but I don't think it'll be very long before we go find a good, you know, Diablo or some other blade because uh, 18 tooth is a pretty rough cut. <laughs> but for general purpose, as a framing blade, whatever, hey, yes, it'll it'll do the job. It's just not gonna do, it's not gonna be pretty, but it'll do the job, you know, of getting through. Next thing we can look at is cords. Cord on the old Craftsman here doesn't look too bad. It's, uh, should get these off so I can show them to you. So let's take a look at the cord. Hmm. Uh, See if we can measure that. Okay, so we're gonna do the cord thing. Uh, let's do the cord challenge this way. <laughs> okay, I've run out of cord on the old one, and I still have. Looks like yeah. Ooh, I'm gonna say close to yeah, at least two two feet more. Two feet more cord on the new one. Wow. They're not stingy on the cord anymore. Yay. Sometimes there's just never enough cord, but yeah, even a couple more feet of cord, at least it gives me the impression that they were thinking for the for the craftsman that, you know, it's going to make his life a little easier. Handle-wise, this has got a lockout, which means you got to hold the button, and then you can pull the trigger to uh, engage the saw. This one here, oddly enough, and I'm not sure if we'll continue to see it or not, but right now it's just straight trigger. There's no lockout on this thing. So it will just run. You know, when you pull that trigger, it's going to go. And I'm sure that over time, we'll see how that works because, you know, these days everything is about safety, safety, safety. So whether they'll keep that or not, I don't know. Obviously the color's different and whatever. Love the logo. Uh, this one here is peeling off. It's sort of falling apart. It's an old plastic logo that was uh, probably epoxied on. Both of them have the metal top at the front here. So no difference there. This is supposed to be, they call this a uh, titanium coated or something uh, plate. And the reason for that is this plate theoretically won't uh, scratch your work too much <laughs> compared to the old metal plate, which was a pretty rough looking piece of plate they had there. There's uh, something else that is with the saw though. This saw has it too, but it has a little guide here so you can put an edge guide along here, but of course you'd have to buy that separately. The Craftsman one is the same thing. Uh, it has a slot here at the front for an edge guide, for a real, a larger, much nicer looking edge guide by the looks of it. And also has a lock, a threaded lock here for the edge guide, but no edge guide for both of the saws. 
when they were sold, did not come with the edge guide, and I don't know, I'd have to get somebody to comment and let me know if you can buy the uh, edge guide separately or where do you get an edge guide for the, you know, the Craftsman saw. Over time, don't know. The other thing too was the latch back here for when you want to set the depth of your cut. That uh, wasn't much different, but I'll show this to you. Uh, see if we can get turned around here a little bit. This one here has a nice tab and you can flip it up and adjust. When you push it down, it goes all the way down to the plate and it's still, it's tight at that point, so it's okay, but there's no adjustment left or anything on it. This one here, there's quite a bit of adjustment before, you know, it's locked at its bottom position right now. And there's a lot of room here, so you're not running into the plate with this. I found that to be a little odd, but that could be over, over time, use of wear and tear or something, but this has always been sloppy and loose on me. Never really been too happy with that over the years with this particular saw. And the other thing I was gonna look at too was the guard itself. You have a small trigger here. Not much different there, but this one is larger. It has a nice little bit of uh, work here where you can you know, get a hold of it better. And it has a nice little curl in it here, so you, it helps you. So, so you could hang on to it like this while you're setting up the saw, say for a cut, if you needed a specific cut where you had to have this guard out of the way immediately from the beginning. About the same, really don't see much difference there. Let's talk about giveaway. Okay, so now we're back. It's Christmas time and we need to give something away. So we're gonna give this away. If you were watching the show last episode, we did a review on this uh, Top Shack from, from uh, banggood.com. Good website, got some really cool deals. They even have rewards and points and stuff, whatever, and discounts for just day-to-day. -day. Plus they have running clearance stuff sometimes. When you get on that, you can get yourself a really good deal on maybe it's something specialty, you know, tool that you're looking for. The detail sander, uh, we just did a quick review on it, but it does prove to be, it's as good a sander as any machine I've, I've seen. For the price, it was a really good sander. Anyways, let's talk about that. Uh, here's the deal. Uh, in the subject line, write sander, and then in the body of the email, just your name and your address, and we'll draw randomly. Now, I'm gonna put the link, or well, we'll put the address right up here, right now. In fact, I'll, I'll get down a little bit so you can get it across here. And it'll be uh, my coffee and tool rewards at gmx.com but I'll write it. I'll also put a link in the description below anyway, so that you can you know, find the email box kind of thing. Send that in. We're gonna go in and clean the email box out right before the show is released. So it's an empty email box, I, I hope. And then we'll fill it up with names and people wanting to deal with this. Now, uh, three days on, I guess Thursday is Christmas Eve. So I'm not quite sure how this is gonna work out. What we'll do is on Christmas Eve, we're going to draw the name for the winner for the detail sander, and I'm going to ship it to you. Now, you have to be in the lower 48 only and or Canada. You can submit your name, you know, name for this item, and we'll ship, we'll cover the cost, ship it right to you, even if it's going to uh, Canada, you know. And at that point, hopefully somebody can win this thing that needs it or wants it. Hopefully it's somebody that wants it or needs it, or, you know, and is on a tight budget like me, where a free sander is a nice thing to have. You know, the uh, I put everything back in the box as it came in from Banggood.com, that website. And this has been a spectacular year, guy. The reviews, the uh, just the overall performance of everything that's been going on has been absolutely smoking. And you know what it proves? It proves that woodworkers are some of the best people on the planet. Okay, yeah. There's I I, I haven't seen a channel. I have been watching other channels, checking statistics and things, and believe me, woodworkers, they're a polite, they're kind of a, you know, tough, tight gang, you know? <laughs> we, we understand the, the virtues of sometimes, you know, things fail or whatever, but man, what a great bunch to deal with. Anyways, <laughs> we thank you for watching and viewing Coffee and Tools. Hopefully, view some more and, can, you know, try to win this. Meantime, thank you, and please like, share, and subscribe. And wow, over and out. <laughs>